ought to do it for now. Uh, if my co-host could please help me keep an eye on that waiting room um, as we kick things off, much appreciated. Uh, just want to make sure I'm letting folks in timely. Uh, so hello, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, so we are on part one today of our Navigating Mainstream Benefits training series. Uh, today's session is going to focus on CalFresh. And a uh, quick intro for myself, my name is Max, and I'm a staff attorney at Homebase. Uh, of course, we're a nonprofit technical assistance provider. We provide TA for COCs all across the country. Uh, we work very closely with Santa Clara's Office of Supportive Housing. And uh, one of the many things that we do in our scope of work is bring you trainings on behalf of OSH. And those trainings uh, are going to include the Navigating Mainstream Benefits training series. So today we're kicking off that series covering CalFresh. Uh, we're always looking to improve these trainings for you. And uh, so near the end, we'll be popping in a feedback form that is specific to this training. Um, and uh, we ask you to fill that out. Uh, it takes maybe a couple minutes and uh, really helps us tailor the trainings and make sure that we're getting you the content and the topic areas that you want to learn the most about. So, all right, as I said, this is part one. Oh. Okay, there it is. All right. Uh, this is part one of the Navigating Mainstream Benefits training series sponsored by the uh, Santa Clara County COC. Part two of this training series is going to take place on Thursday, July 27th from 11 to 1. Uh, please be sure to mark your calendar with a hold. I'm filling in for my colleague Carla, so I'm not sure if the invite has gone out just yet for that. Uh, if it has, please disregard that note. Um, and uh, just like for this training, registration will be required. Uh, so it looks like I've got a registration link here for you, and I'm going to drop that in the chat. All right. Okay, and uh, next slide, a little bit of Zoom housekeeping. So in terms of tech, I know by now everybody's pretty familiar with Zoom. Uh, I do want to let you know that we are recording this training. As always, uh, all of the training materials, materials are going to be sent out and posted to the COC training website. Please don't feel, feel like you need to screenshot the slides or anything like that. Uh, we're going to keep everyone on mute by default. But there will be questions along the way, uh, so you can unmute unmute yourself. Uh, in the meantime, you're also more than uh, welcome to ask questions in the chat. And if you have any tech issues, please feel free to uh, DM me directly um, through the chat function. Closed captions are available, so if you hit that closed caption button uh, indicated by a little CC mark, uh, then uh, you will see those pop up. Okay, and lastly, uh, for my piece, I just want to run a quick icebreaker. So uh, just as an intro icebreaker, um, so that you're all familiarized with the chat feature, I'd ask you to go ahead and open that up and introduce yourself in there by your name, your preferred pronouns, your organization, and uh, today's icebreaker, we'd like to know something you're proud of this week. Um, I recognize it's Tuesday, so you could be presumptively proud of something if it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Uh, uh, while folks are warming up in the chat and introducing themselves, uh, I will go ahead and pass it to Patricia and Aaron to introduce themselves and to begin the training. Thanks, Max. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Max. So, yes. Uh, Patricia and I are here from Second Harvest. We're gonna be going over um, CalFresh. That's what this training is about today. So introducing myself, my name is Aaron. I'm one of the outreach coordinators with Second Harvest. Um, been with Second Harvest for about a year and a half now, uh, providing a lot of these presentations to a lot of our partner organizations, as well as potential partner organizations and clients. Um, and what I'm proud of so far, man, it's only Tuesday. Um, 
But I guess I'm, I'm proud that Patricia and I have prepared for this presentation. Hopefully it goes well. Thanks, Garen. And good morning, everyone. My name is Patricia Cervantes. I'm one of the outreach coordinators here at Second Harvest. And I have been a Second Harvest going to be four years in August. Um, and I am proud to be able to be share this with all of you. Um, hopefully you can help us bring the awareness of this benefit out to your members, uh, the clients that you that you serve. And hopefully we can teach you something today. So I'm very happy and proud to be here today. All right, thank you everyone for responding to the chat. Very great work so far this week. All right, so should we get started, Patricia? Mm -hmm. Start sharing my screen here. Can you see my screen? Yes. Looks good. All right. Awesome. So we are here from uh, Second Harvest of Silicon Valley, and today we're going to give you some of the ways that you can help us nourish our community by sharing our um, with the members that you serve, sharing the, the some of the programs that we help. So the goals for today is to give you an overview of the food programs available here at Second Harvest, as well as Max mentioned, uh, overview on CalFresh. With CalFresh, we're going to cover basic CalFresh eligibility. Hopefully we can help you uh, dispelling some of the myths that you hear out there and how to help unhoused applicants uh, to apply for this benefit as well. And at the end, we're gonna cover how to become an outreach partner if you're interested in learning more of these programs that we have, more than happy to do that for you as well. Along the way, if there's any questions that come up, like Max said, please feel free to um, uh, either put them on the chat or unmute yourself, whatever's easier for you, so that we can answer these questions as we go along. So who do we serve? Pretty much anyone in need of food in both Santa Clara and San Mateo counties, uh, from hardworking families, individuals trying to make ends meet, seniors on a fixed income, um, uh, college students, or unhoused community members. One of the things here at Second Harvest is that we really wanna make this uh, free groceries easy to access. So anyone who needs food is allowed to attend regardless of age, family composition, and or zip code. We serve clients who, who live in or work in Santa Clara, in Santa Clara, San Mateo counties. What does that mean? That we do have clients every now and then that they call their hotline number uh, looking for those additional resources that not, don't, that doesn't necessarily live here in Santa Clara, San Mateo County, but they work in this area. So they pick up groceries, you know, near their work area, and then they bring them back home to, to their own uh, outside of our counties, and that's okay. Uh, clients can attend as many food distributions as they need. They're not limited to just one. What does this mean? A lot of the times we get questions when they get, when we get called that, um, because they were giving a distribution site where to go pick up groceries, they think, a client might think that they're just chained to that one distribution. And for whatever reason, sometimes they cannot make up the, that distribution. They can always have a secondary place where they can go and pick up uh, more groceries if needed. They can attend whatever location is more convenient for them, either something within five mile radius of their home address or something near their work area where they work. And we, of course, we have a variety of distribution styles to support the preferences and the needs of the clients from drive-through uh, distributions to farmer's market uh, distributions. And also there's pantries, agencies out there that help us with the pantry style distribution. Home delivery is also available for people who are a physical, who have a physical or unable to leave their homes to pick up groceries, then we have that program also available. So now I'm gonna cover our free uh, food resources. So one of the things with the food resources is that the clients will receive, um, they have 450 grocery sites throughout both Santa Clara County and San Mateo County. So all the way from Gilroy, all the way to Daly City, 
They can pick and choose what distribution they would like to attend with 130 drive through sites available in between these two counties. They can expect that, uh, you know, they can expect to receive 50% fresh produce, 25% protein and dairy, and the other 25% is made of non-perishable items. Typically, a client will receive $250 worth of free groceries each month. What to expect at the first uh, food distribution? There, uh, there are different ways with uh, each distribution has their, their weight set up, right? But one of the things that for sure they can expect consistency throughout the distributions is the type of um, food that they're gonna receive. Either assortments from fresh produce, eggs, milk, meat, and pantry staples. The volunteers will help register uh, the client and they will provide them with the client ID card. This client ID card, the volunteer will suggest to, or give the tip to the client to please take a picture of the client ID card. Many times clients, they change purse or wallets, or they, they were driving a friend's car and they forget their uh, client ID member card in the car. So it's always, it's always convenient to take a picture that way they can you know, show the, the client ID number when they go pick up food at the distribution. They can, also, they can also pick up for other families if they need to. So if they need to pick up for, for their neighbors and they cannot make it that day, they just have to bring their member the client ID card or a picture of the client ID card so that they can pick up for other families. This is what the, one of the drive-through distributions look like. Um, the client will be, will be checked in by the volunteers and the volunteers will provide some instructions to the clients as well. They will let them know to please put the car and park while waiting in line. And this is just so for, the, for the client safety as well as the volunteer safety. And of course, always be aware of the surroundings of the area. Then we also have our farmer's market style distribution. This distribution is more for clients who have either uh, uh, diet, diet needs, right? Or that they don't really wanna take everything that is given to them. And this type of distribution, the market style distribution, they can actually pick and choose what they like to take home. So like what you can see in the picture, the client will, for, will go and if they could say, you know what, I'm okay with the beans. I don't wanna take the beans. They can move on to the rice and they get to pick and choose what they wanna take home with them. Where the drive through distribution, you don't have the flexibility. We also have our home, uh, I was mentioning about the grocery home delivery program. So this program is available to homebound people of any age that have a physical or mental disability and that do not have someone to help them pick up at a distribution. Sometimes we do have clients call that don't have their caregiver that can pick up for them. But if you have a client, if you're helping someone that even though they have a caregiver, but the caregiver cannot go pick up for them, because of their time schedule with their client, then they don't, they're not uh, mandatory to pick with them, for them, right? So they can just be referred to us and we can help them um, uh, put them on our grocery, on our home delivery grocery list uh, to sign them up for that. The client for home delivery, they can expect the same as they, if they would at the distribution site, they'll get uh, dairy, produce and non-perishable items. Currently, Second Harvest is serving about 5,300 plus households, and we're doing this uh, twice per month. We also have our prepare meals. Um, so our partners offer ready to eat meals between uh, both counties. We have about 30 locations. These prepare meals are more often used for people who don't have access to cooking facility or who can't prepare their own meals. Um, but if there's someone that, of course, is not just limited to just that, right? Not just limited to them. There's always open for others that they might have a cooking facility, but for whatever reason today, they just don't have a meal and they wanna have access to something quick. We can give them a referral for that as well. Then of course, right now during, uh, we have our summer, summer meal program. 
So this for the uh, free summer meal programs for all, all children 18 and under. These are all kids in Santa Clara and San Mateo counties can get free healthy meals during the summer of 2023. No documentation or registration is required. However, there are some, um, some places where they require for the child to be present. So the best way is to either visit our Second Harvest website for, for the instructions of a particular place where they're providing the summer meals, or uh, clients can also call our 1-800 number, which we'll be going that in more detail a little bit more further ahead. Uh, Patricia, can I uh, interrupt? Mm -hmm. uh, we got a question in the chat. Um, Eric would like to know, are prepared meals delivered as well? No, not prepared meals. Unfortunately, prepared meals, these are something where we'll refer them to, and they'll go, we'll give them the date, the time, and um, a place where they can go and pick up a prepared meal. Some of the kitchens are open to, uh, for, the, for the client to enjoy their meal there. And some other ones, they provide like a little lunch bag that they can just come pick up and, and take it back with them. Awesome. Thanks, Patricia. Thank you. Another program that we uh, we uh, proud to assist here at Second Harvest is helping with assistance in CalFresh applications. When we help a client apply for CalFresh benefits, we don't just fill out the application for them. We um, we help them fill out the application, but we also submit with them for them the the documents needed to the county, as well as if the client needs additional assistance when calling the county, we can provide that as well. Roughly a family of four can secure maximum benefits of $939 per month in benefits. And these benefits, uh, they can spend them on most grocery stores. They can also use online ordering. Uh, some participating farmers market where they could uh, go and use some of the money. And then in return, they would also get $10 worth in vouchers that they can utilize there at the farmers market. And then of course there's participating restaurants, right? That take EBT. One of the things to note though, is that uh, major retailers will take um, online purchasing. However, CalFresh would only cover the food cost of what they're ordering. They will not cover, CalFresh will not cover uh, delivery fees. So if there's a delivery fee from, um, from an online ordering provider, then the client needs to needs to provide an additional way a method of payment. We also have our nutrition center. Uh, the nutrition center has a lot of uh, a lot of uh, recipes and videos that client can follow, and they also they're actually ranked by easy, medium, hard. Uh, one of the cool things about the nutrition center is that whenever a client goes to a distribution and they come across a, uh, an ingredient that they're not familiar with, they can always go into our second harvest uh, website nutrition center and they can get an idea of how to utilize this, this ingredient. Uh, to give you an example, I was at a distribution um, and it was more like the, the population there is more uh, uh, Hispanic, and they were offering turnips, and there were sacks and sacks of turnips, and I keep seeing everybody, they're picking up their groceries, but they're bypassing the turnips. Nobody wants to take the turnips. So then I had to go into our 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 website and search how do you can how can you utilize the how can you utilize the turnips, right? And then you come across even for me it was unfamiliar for me I've never used those before. So then I come across how you can roast them, you can puree them, you can actually eat it like uh, just with a little bit of lime and tajin. And you know me, being Mexican, I love my tajin. So in the many many uh, ways that you can um, you can prepare this item, but if if the client is not familiar how to use it, they don't want to take it. Once I start giving the you know the idea of how they can use this item and how beneficial this item was, people start taking uh, the turnips. So that's a good a good thing to have. So this is our food connection team. Um, we connect we connect the clients to free groceries and help them apply, apply for CalFresh. 
We have 18 bilingual staff. So we have in-house English, Spanish, Chinese, Vietnamese, and Tagalog. Uh, three ways uh, translation available for other languages. And of course, uh, most of our calls are answered live. Uh, clients can contact us any, any day, Monday through Friday from eight to five. Um, you can see our number here is 1-800-984-3663 um, for clients to be able to reach us. We also have our food locator tool. This is a great tool. This actually, this tool, um, it's fairly new. Um, and one of the things I like about this tool is that a lot of agencies out there sometimes they want to provide the convenience to the to their the the clients that they're serving, right? And sometimes they'll print um, distributions with with dates and you know time schedules for to be able to provide the clients. The problem when we're printing those distributions is that sometimes the distribution could be canceled or rescheduled. And once you have those, those forms printed now, it's too late for you to change, right? And if a client took a schedule, they can go to a distribution thinking, oh, there's gonna be a distribution here today, only to get there and find out that there's no distribution, the distribution was canceled. So the best tool to use will be our food locator. Um, how you can use it to food locator, we're just gonna give you a quick intro of how you could use the food locator. So here on the food locator, the first thing you'll notice on the, on the top there is just our secondharvestwebsite.org, get food. Once you have that, you have on the left uh, side of the screen. So this, this, is a, this is what it would look like once you go in, then you scroll down and on the left side of the screen, you'll see find food. And then you can choose from free groceries, ready to eat meals, summer meals for kids. Uh, you can filter by type of days or preferred times of the day. Um, then you can, the next thing you have is the address or a zip code. Uh, let's say we're gonna type in 95125 zip code. Once it's, you type in the zip code and you pretty much open to whatever distribution available, you'll see all these drop pins um, that come in uh, here. But if you look at the top right corner of the map, you see uh, uh, where it says list. If you click the list, it would give you a list of all the distributions um, available near the area. And on the distribution, you'll be able to see, you know, how often this distribution happens. So for this one is every first and third Tuesday of the month. This is a walk-up distribution. This is the type of groceries where you choose your own food. Some food is already boxed or bagged. Uh, you see when is our the, ne the next events coming up. What is uh, some info for new clients? So if the client never been to the distribution, this is what, you know, what they need to uh, bring with them, right? Some, especially if it's a market style distribution, they would have to bring their own little wagon, right? Or they need to bring their own little bags of where to put all their food. Um, what to bring for the few bids that you can see no documents needed. Um, a family member or friend may pick up on behalf of another client but they will be asked to provide the client ID number or identify the other client's uh, information as well. Okay. Then we're gonna give you, um, what is CalFresh? So CalFresh is a benefit program to help people buy healthy food at stores and our supermarkets. Some clients, uh, they're not familiar with the word CalFresh. A lot of the times they, they're more comfortable with food stamps. That's the easier way for them to identify it. EBT, rarely SNAP. Um, but it's a, way, it's a great way to review, in, uh, to review, to see for low-income families, see if they, if they qualify, um, and give them an idea in education of um, what food stamps is and how they can benefit from this, from this benefit. 
how to use CalFresh. CalFresh is just like an EBT card, right? Like it's just like a debit card. It would have the client's um, ID, the client's name, the client will have their own personal uh, PIN number that they can use. The receipt will show how much is left on the card and any benefits that they're not utilized will be transferred rollover to the next month. One of the cool things about having CalFresh is that the client can pretty much go on their own schedule, right? Whenever they feel uh, that it's a good time for them to go purchase at their store, or if they were to, you know, if they were picking up groceries at one of our grocery sites, we always recommend combining the two benefits. Go to a grocery, a free grocery site, pick up some free groceries, but then also use your CalFresh benefits and whatever you didn't receive at the grocery site, buy it with your CalFresh benefits. Some of the CalFresh eligible food that you can buy is all food fit for human consumption from fresh produce, canned items, dairy, cereal, uh, meat, poultry, fish. However, some items are not allowed for purchase such as uh, hot prepared foods, uh, medications, vitamin supplements, alcohol, household items, pet food and or clothing. We're gonna go over some of uh, CalFresh eligibility and how we can help a household um, identify. The first step of how to, we can help them identify if they should be applying together or not. So what's a household composition? So what is a household? A household can be a single individual or a group of people that purchase and prepare food together. Um, so if you have two, two, two families living in, in one same household, uh, but if they don't purchase and prepare food together, uh, they don't have to be a one household. So if you see like on the little picture on the top right, you see two families, they're in the same house address. However, um, these two families, they purchase and they prepare their own food separately. Okay, so we can help them find out um, how, if they should be included as one household composition or they should be separately. And we can do that by asking them, how many people do you regularly buy and prepare food with, including yourself? That would, should give them an idea of, well, should I be including my sister-in-law and um, my brother and their kids, or should it just be me and my, and my, my husband and my children? Right, that should help them uh, uh, see if they should be uh, including the, the others in the family or not. The people that should apply together. So this is even if you have, again, two families, but one of the, the, the other family is under 22 and is the uh, children of the, you know, the part of the children then they must apply together. So people who have to apply together, so rule of thumb, people who must and have to apply together is children 22 years and under living with their parents, married couples living together. People who can apply separately are roommates, individuals, or family who live at the same address but buy and prepare food separately. Kind of like what I was saying previously, if you have two families, live at the same address, but they purchase and prepare food separately, then they're considered a separate household. They only apply together if they're children 22 years and under living with their parents or if they're married couples living together. There's also some immigration statuses, um, eligibility requirements. So only the, those with qualifying immigration status are eligible, but you can have ineligible members of the household and still qualify for CalFresh. At least one member of the household needs to have um, eligible status. So one member of the household, either they be a US citizen, permanent resident, have, um, be a refugee, have a political asylum, um, and this must be approved. Uh, immigrants receiving immigration relief, uh, U or T visa holders, even when the uh, application is still pending. 
Ineligible statuses will be undocumented or unauthorized individuals, feeling felons, or immigrants with temporary vis visas. I want to note that it that should say fleeing felons, not feeling. Sorry. Fleeing oh, thank felons. you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have our first scenario for you all here, and please feel free to type your answer in the chat. Uh, the scenario is a married couple, Joey and Zoe, want to know if they can apply for CalFresh. They are both 21 and have a four month old baby. They recently moved into Joey's parents' house. They both have jobs. They pay Joey's parents for rent and purchase and prepare their own food. They want to know if they can apply for coverage on their own without including Joy's parents. What did you tell them? We're getting a number of Bs in the chat. And this is a tricky question because these are both, um, it's telling you, right, that they purchase and prepare their own food separately. However, rule of thumb is, remember, anyone 22 or younger living under the parents, they have to apply with their parents. That's the rule of thumb. Even like in this case where um, Joey and Zoe they are uh, both working, they're paying rent, they're purchasing and preparing their own food separately from Joey's parents. But because they live with Joey's parents, exactly under 22, Elisa. Um, so they'll have to apply with Joey's parents. So the answer is A. Uh, Patricia, we have another question in the chat as well. Can I run past you? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, Monica asks, if a member of a household is eligible, but other members are not based on documentation, uh, can they be counted in the household number? Yes. So if a household has uh, one, per, say, four people in the household, only one is eligible and the other three aren't, all four people will be put in the application. And this is so that the county can see how many people are supporting themselves with that income, right? But only the person that is eligible will be the one qualifying for the benefits. So Monica says thanks. You're very welcome. Uh, Eric has another question, asks if, uh, sorry, why aren't they considered adults if they are 21 and also have a child? So if they were to leave outside um, the parents, they they could apply on their own. But here, uh, the law is if the child is 22 years old and live at home with the parents, they must be included uh, with the parents as part of their household because they're still living at home with the parents. Once they move out, then they'll be able to apply on their own. So for CalFresh is different than how it would be for um, other stuff, right? Some, some items, some uh, things where they say, once you're 18, you're considered an adult. Uh, once you're 21, you, you, you could do this, that, right? Um, but for CalFresh, same thing with the seniors. For, for, for CalFresh benefits, seniors are 60. Once you reach 60, you're a senior. And for, yeah, for, the, for the children, once you're 22, past 22, you're an adult. Uh, Eric asks a clarifying question on that same thread. Uh, Eric would like to know, what if the uh, young couple is paying rent to their parents? Does that establish them as a separate household? No. So even if they're paying rent, and they're buying their own food and they have their own fridge. But because they live in at the same address with the parents, and because of the of the of the clause of the law, 22 or uh, younger, they must apply with the with the parents. They cannot apply on their own. 
Thanks and for that see, response. No problem. Then I see Ellen. If an undocumented individual is living with a boyfriend that has legal status, can they apply together? Yes. Yes, they can. Awesome. I think that got us through all the questions. I'll keep an eye out and let you know if any more come up. Okay. Thanks. So once we help a client determine uh, who should be put together in the household, the next thing is determining the income of the family, right? So once we determine who should put, be together, now we're going to go into the calculation of the household uh, if they meet the, the CalFresh income guidelines. We can ask clients, you know, what is your monthly income before taxes? So the, there is income earned versus, versus unearned income. <clears throat> so earned income includes wages from a job, self-employment, including rental income, um, military income. Unearned income uh, includes state disability, child support, unemployment benefits, SSI, workers' compensation, cash aid, cow works, general assistance, foster care payments, or veterans' uh, benefits. Uh, those are the two um, uh, earned versus unearned income. Some of the income to be excluded are uh, non-monetary benefits in kind, like loans and frequent uh, income, no more than $30 per quarter, not recurring lump sum uh, payments, tax returns, scholarships, college grants, um, money earned by a child under 18 years of age who is going to school full-time. Those are not, uh, those are income that, um, that to be excluded. Patricia, Income can I interrupt with one yeah, more go ahead. question. Uh, mm -hmm. Ellen is asking if the kids are over 22 but still living with their parents, can they apply individually? Yes. So now, if they're if they're uh, 22, is still living with their parents, and as long as they are purchasing and preparing food separately, yes, they could apply separately. Thanks. Mm -hmm. These are some of the income eligibility limits. Um, and this are for uh, October of 2022 to September of 23, uh, 2023 this year. And then at that point um, comes October, if they, there's adjustments that this, this, income, uh, eligible, this income limits change. But for a household of one, gross monthly income is 2,266. And net monthly income is 1,133. Uh, 1, For each person in the household you add, so each time you add one person in the household, then you add $788 in gross monthly income or $394 in net monthly income. And I see a question. So SSI income for a minor does not need to be included on the application. Yes, it will be included. It's just that it's not, um, it's not, um, it's unearned income. So it will be included as an unearned income. All right, thank you, Patricia. So. After we see, I think we might have some questions coming in still. So we'll get to the questions before we move on here. So, mm -hmm. Eric's question: My member is getting less than that a month, less than that, and she is making one thousand one hundred thirty-three per month. Do they need to reapply since they haven't done it in more than two years? So, one of the things to to also consider with Income eligibility, there's also expenses, right? And I know Erin is going to cover that a little more uh, down on the si slides, but even if the, if the sometimes 
if they meet the income, the net income, they would qualify for CalFresh benefits. So one of the things we could do, they, I suggest Eric is uh, you can either have them give us a call or if you wanna reach back to us and we can help you further with this client. But if they are making net income of um, less than 1,133 for a household of one, uh, if they're meeting the net income, um, assuming that they do have expenses, they most likely would apply, qualify for CalFresh benefits. And is she, do they need to reapply since they haven't done it in more than two years? Is this, I'm assuming this person is a senior for you, Eric. So seniors do have to get recertified uh, at least three months, every three years. Yeah, I, I would definitely, um, I would definitely suggest to uh, either speak to the eligibility worker, just make sure that they review everything. Mistakes do happen sometimes. So just to make sure that everything is good in, in, in both ends to review the, to review the benefits. So maybe there's now medical expenses that she didn't include when she first, uh, when she first applied for her benefits. So, you know, she needs to make sure that any medical expenses that weren't included, she needs to include it. If she hasn't updated her rent, you know, maybe that she was paying before when she applied till now. Uh, so any changes, she needs to notify the county so that they can make the proper adjustments to her benefits. Um, and I've seen this a lot, especially after the emergency allowment, when it ended. Uh, a lot of people went from getting 281 back down to what they were supposed to be getting when they first applied. The problem is that when they first applied, because they were getting the emergency allotment, they weren't really paying attention at the amount of benefit. Where now when the emergency allotment ended, now, they, now they're really seeing the difference, right? Like how it's really hurting because it's only 281 to $40 is it's a, it's a big cut. And uh, Lisa has a question. Do you see an increase, decrease in eligibility limits over the years? Um, yes. You, you Some, sure. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. So yeah, just last year, the uh, income um, was 2028 for one. I mean, it did increase a little bit, not the increase that we would expect, you know, we would want to see, especially how everything is right now. Um, and then the year prior was 1967. So if they do increase, unfortunately, not as you know, it's not a big uh, jump as we would want to see. But yeah, you see the uh, increases. And then Josephine's question: uh, They're reporting their earned income, and that counts towards this monthly income limit. That would be yes. Yeah, the, the earned and unearned income are combined. Uh, we only separate the two because when we, when uh, when Sacred Harvest staff talks to a client, we ha we have to check for their in income earned and income unearned, just because how that's how we pre-screen. That's how our pre-screening tool works, and so we just kind of delineate between those two. But then they uh, they all eventually just get combined into one, and that'll be their gross income. Uh, we had one additional question. Uh, Lorenia asks if SSI income for a minor uh, needs to be included on the application. Yes. So yes, for SSI, all SSI income um, needs to be included, even for a minor. And I know it's confusing because we mentioned about uh, 18 years, you know, if they're an 18 year old, they don't have to include the income, but that's different. That comes from a job. Um, SSI benefits are, are, are different than, uh, even though it's from a minor also. Excellent. Okay. I think that was all the questions. Awesome. Thank you, Max. Um, so now to get to this third column here, the net monthly income, we have to take into account the deductions for um, that applicant, that family, that household, and so similar to taxes, the amount of CalFresh received by household is based on a series of calculations and deductions. The county's system automatically determines that benefit amount based on that net income amount that gets calculated. 
And so knowing these deductions and what deductions are available to the household client applicant, I will better prepare them so that they can receive the highest CalFresh benefit that they're able to receive. Now, what are those expenses that we can include on the application? These are two, three, four, five, six of the expenses that are um, allowed on the CalFresh application. So housing, rent, mortgage, property taxes, utilities. We don't need to know the exact amount each uh, CalFresh application uses a standard utility deduction. And so that is automatically uh, calculated into the net monthly calculation. Uh, dependent care, any amount paid for care can be deducted from their income, child support. And for seniors or applicants who have a disability, medical expenses can be deducted. And for college students, educational expenses can be deducted as well. And what do those medical deductions include for folks over 60 or have a disability. Um, so anything over $35 per month can be deducted. So any medical vision, dental care, uh, outpatient treatments, uh, insurance premiums, co-pays, prescriptions, glasses, home health care, transportation, service animal costs, or even providing meals to an attendant. So any uh, expenses for medical deductions over 35 gets calculated onto the application for, again, over the age of 60 or someone with a disability. And so based on their net monthly income, um, these are the maximum monthly allotments, but depending on their net monthly income, that could change. Of course, if they have a higher net income, the lower their monthly allotment would be. The lower their net income is, the closer they get to this maximum allotment of 281 for a one-person household. Uh, for a four-person household, that monthly allotment is 939. And so again, um, not every applicant will receive that maximum amount. It all depends on that monthly um, net income calculation. And so knowing the deductions is very important so that we can make sure our clients receive the highest amount that they're eligible to receive. And so putting it all together, um, so when we're doing the pre-screen, uh, we ask, you know, what, you know, what we tell them know what, what CalFresh is, of course, and then that we're going to ask them questions to determine their eligibility. And then next question after that is who? How many people do you buy and cook food with, including yourself? So determining that household composition as well as the immigration statuses and eligibility for that household, that family. And then how much, how much are you earning in monthly income for taxes? That's that gross monthly income. And then factoring in the deductions, which would be, you know, rent, housing, childcare, child support, medical expenses, educational expenses, et cetera. So that is the total. These steps that we just reviewed are basically the pre-screening steps that we as second harvest do when talking to a client and helping them apply. And so the overall process, what does that look like? The first step is always outreach whenever we're out in the community, talking to people about CalFresh, educating them, or whenever you are all talking to your clients about CalFresh, that's, that first, that's always that first step of outreach and helping them understand what it is, how to be eligible, what are the steps to apply. Now, after we do that outreach, that then comes the pre-screening and making sure that they have the documents, verification documents needed in order to be approved. And so that second step is something that we could help with at Second Harvest. Um, we do that pre-screening. We let them know what documents they need to submit to the county. Um, and if they have the documents with them, we could also help them submit the documents for them. Now, the third step, something we also help with, submitting the application, and that goes directly to the county. Then the county processes the application, contacts that client within about two to three weeks to what they call for their CalFresh interview. Um, and then after they have their interview, the county receives all the documents, then they are approved or denied within about 30 days. So that's the overall process there. So next, we're gonna go over some of the myths and fears and kind of going through some of the common questions that we receive and that we've seen about CalFresh. And we'll go each, I know, sorry if this is small, 
we'll go each by each question. Do I have to pay CalFresh back? No, uh, you will not have to pay any money back excuse me, to the county unless you are overpaid. Um, and being overpaid usually means that if um, the net monthly income calculation was wrong because of a uh, failure to give the county the correct information on income or expenses. Um, that usually gets determined um, if something is looks wrong during the SAR-7, the six month um, certification or annual certification. Do CalFresh benefits roll over each month? Yes, any balance remaining on your EBT card, debit, uh, EBT card, CalFresh card gets rolled over to the following month. Um, no, be the benefits won't be adjusted or reduced because you aren't using the full amount every month. So uh, any unused benefits will get rolled over to the next month. It's not a, you won't lose it if you don't use it. Um, do you have to pay taxes on CalFresh? No, you don't need to pay. Uh, and you don't need to report CalFresh on your tax return. Does CalFresh count as income? Nope. CalFresh allotments made to each household are not counted as taxable income. Do I need to show proof of income when applying for CalFresh? Earned and unearned income must be reported, like we mentioned. If you need help getting documentation, yeah, definitely it's advisable to discuss your needs with the CalFresh caseworker during the interview, because I know uh, earned and earned income may be difficult to get that specific documentation. Um, there are other ways if they're if they don't receive pay stubs, for example, there are other ways to document that through affidavit letters and stuff like that. Who can get CalFresh? Uh, you can get CalFresh even if you get money from a job, disability, unemployment, Social Security, CalWORKs, general assistance, SSI, or retirement. So generally speaking, anyone could apply for CalFresh as long as they meet the eligibility, eligibility requirements. Can I get CalFresh if I don't have kids? Yes, people who don't have children can certainly get CalFresh. And another list of some common questions we get, can I get CalFresh as a college student? Yes, many college students can certainly be eligible for CalFresh, but there are specific college student requirements uh, specifically for those college students that they have to meet in order to qualify. Can I get CalFresh if I am not a legal resident or citizen? To qualify, at least one member of the household must be legal permanent resident or US citizen. Uh, even if that person is a child, that child, the kind of what we discussed already, as long as one person in that household that is a legal uh, permanent resident citizen, then they may be eligible. Uh, sponsored immigrants may also be eligible. Uh, can I get CalFresh if I own my own home or a car, yes. If you own your own home or car, have savings, have checking accounts, you may still be eligible. Will CalFresh hurt my child's future? No, your children will not be negatively impacted if you receive CalFresh. Uh, children will not have to serve in the military if you receive CalFresh. Children won't have to pay back any CalFresh benefits at any time, and children will not be taken away from you if you are receiving CalFresh benefits or applying. Uh, can I reapply for CalFresh if I was denied? Yes, even if you applied for CalFresh before and were denied, you could always try again. Uh, there's always new laws that are passing to make it easier for folks to qualify. Uh, like Patricia mentioned, the income limits change every October. Uh, it's called the cost of living adjustment. So those income limits uh, monthly gross usually increase so that hopefully more people are eligible. Um, and of course, people's situation changes year to year. Uh, sometimes their income changes, sometimes their expenses changes, so they could be eligible based on any changes um, that happened in the past year. And does CalFresh take my fingerprints? No, no fingerprinting is, uh, is not longer required to get CalFresh. And will it hurt to my chances to become a citizen applying for CalFresh? Long and short answer is no. Um, if you are in the process of reclining, is in the process of becoming a citizen, 
uh, that is not considered a public charge. And I know that's something that a lot of our, our clients that we work with have questions on, um, is not considered a public charge applying for CalFresh. And there's letters here linked on this PowerPoint that you can share with your clients if they ever have that type of uh, concern. This letter clearly defines that applying for CalFresh SNAP uh, will not be considered you know, a violation or anything like that in their process to become a citizen or legal permanent resident. Aaron, a question in the chat asks, uh, how long does it take to transfer CalFresh benefits from another county to Santa Clara? And while the client is waiting, uh, can they already apply to SCC CalFresh? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, transferring benefits, um, not entirely sure how long it takes, but the process is fairly similar to new applications. It could take about a month to transfer from one county to another. I know some students that I've worked with, college students, uh, that come from another county, move to San Jose because they're going to San Jose State, for example, they have to transfer their monthly or their CalFresh benefits. So um, from what I've heard from those students, um, the count, they start a, uh, they initiate with their previous county, say for example, Alameda County. They tell Alameda County, oh, I'm moving to Santa Clara County. Can you initiate the transfer to Santa Clara County? And then they do that. And then Santa Clara County sometimes also asks them to submit a new application at the same time. Um, and so along with kind of, you know, kind of the timeline for a new application, it takes about a month. So I, I could see it taking about a month for a transfer in that same way. Um, yeah, Patricia, do you have any idea on timelines? No, yeah, it's the, it's the what you said, it's 30, about 30 days. Uh, but but like you mentioned, sometimes the county will ask for a new application. And then there's one additional question asking about uh, documentation status. So uh, what is the process going to look like for a household where some people have documents and others don't? Uh, will the county only ask for the set of documents uh, for the eligible applicant? That's a great question, Monica. So for depending on the immigration status of that, those applicants, and Patricia, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, I believe only the eligible status household members will have to submit those documents. Um, for example, household of four, Maybe one parent may not be a eligible qualified immigration status, other parent is, then that parent that isn't the qualified immigration status, whether that's US citizen, legal permanent resident, that parent will have to submit documents. Um, I think that's the case there. Patricia, any anything to add? No, that's uh, you got that's uh, exactly how it is. Yeah. Yeah, so Monica, that's that we'll need to submit. Another question asks, if young parents are not married, do they still apply together uh, with the children or separate? Great question. If young parents are not married, assuming that they live together mm -hmm. with their children, if they buy and cook food together, then yes, they would have to apply together. Um, I, there are instances when, you know, maybe one parent has severe allergies, so they, that parent you know, buys their own, cooks their own food, and the other parent, along with their kids, buys and cooks their, their separate own food. They're not married, then technically they could apply separately because they're not buying and cooking their own food. And that's the that's the main thing with how fresh buying, preparing, cooking food together. Um, so they're not married, cooking food separately. Yes, it's possible that they could apply separately. Uh, but if they're sharing food together, then they'd have to all apply together. Also, just to add there, Aaron, to um, if their parents, um, assuming that they're not living together, but they're sharing cu custody, you know, child custody, so the child is three days with the dad, four days with the mom, then yes, they can apply separately, and the uh, the county will adjust uh, the benefits the mom receives if mom qualifies, or what the dad 
that will receive, you know, depending that that is the one that qualifies. Last question from this round asks, if the situation changes and you start receiving less money than when you first apply, should that person be updating their records? Yes, yep, yep, yep. So if their benefits change, um, they're receiving less benefits and that's kind of a red flag for them and they think they should be receiving more, definitely reach out to the county worker or their caseworker to see you know, what things they need, need to update, whether that's their income, their expenses, household size, stuff like that. Thanks, that does it for this round. Thanks. Thanks. All right, so we're gonna talk about unhoused applicants specifically now. Um, who is an unhoused applicant? Of course, an individual experiencing homelessness. The person has no fixed regular place to sleep at night. They live in a shelter or an armory or a welfare hotel. They live in a halfway house. If they're living for less than 90 days in someone else's home, so if they're moving house to house every month, every week, stuff like that, uh, live somewhere that people do not usually live, such as a doorway, lobby, bus station, hallway, car, or subway. Uh, people experiencing homelessness can get CalFresh even if they live in a shelter and get free meals there. Uh, they do not have to have any place to cook or store the food that they would uh, get from their CalFresh benefits, and they are also more likely to be eligible for CalFresh ex expedited services, so expired services uh, is a, um, a way for eligible households applicants to receive CalFresh within about three business days, so it's a quicker turnaround time than kind of those regular applications that take about a month. And to be eligible for expired services, um, they have to be one of these three circumstances. So the household has less than $150 in gross monthly income and have less than $100 in liquid resources, liquid resources being cash, money in any um, bank account, savings, checkings accounts. Or the household has to have a month, their monthly housing costs, rent, mortgage, uh, standard utility allowance has to be less than the sum of that household's liquid resources, so that's their cash, checking savings accounts money, and their gross income. That sounds a little confusing, but um, that's something that we could help determine with the client when we talk to them. Um, so basically just their expenses has to be uh, every month more than what they earn every month from gross income, plus their money saved in cash or checking savings accounts. And, or the last um, el eligible expired service status is household is made up of migrant farm workers who do not currently have and or are not expecting to work for the month. Um, and there are some special rights for the our, um, unhoused applicants. So the CalFresh office cannot force unhoused clients to produce an address and clients can still receive benefits even if there's no fixed address, they can use the county's address to receive NOAs, NOAs means uh, notice of actions. And uh, they also don't have to do the semi-annual report, it's also called a SAR-7. Um, they get an exception to kind of skip that SAR-7 and just do the annual recertification. They get this exception only if the entire household though is unhoused. and some accommodations, people who are, who are unhoused may use their CalFresh benefits at certain restaurants, grocery stores, to buy prepared meals through the restaurant meals program. And so there are, it's not linked on this, um, on this PowerPoint, but there are restaurants in Santa Clara County and San Mateo County that accept EBT. We could send that link over um, to Max and Carla so, to, so you could all have that resource, but um, these restaurants will have a sign that says that they accept EBT. Um, I will say though, those restaurants are usually uh, fast food from what I've seen. There are some subways in Santa Clara County, I'm not sure in San Mateo County, but um, that is an option for our unhoused uh, community members. And if an individual does not have an ID, uh, the eligibility worker will assist 
that uh, applicant to obtain adequate documentation, identification, because an I some form of ID is required to uh, kind of approve the application. Uh, and if you know that applicant doesn't have an ID, the eligibility worker can also verify a person's identity by calling someone, such as if they live in a shelter, the shelter worker, or the employer for the uh, applicant to confirm their identity. Uh, sometimes voter registration may also be an acceptable ID to secure CalFresh benefits. And for unhoused youth, they who are not living with their parents or under the control of an adult can get CalFresh benefits on their own separately. Um, so the income for these uh, folks don't have to include their parents' income on their CalFresh calculation and eligibility. So next, we're gonna talk about some next steps uh, to kind of promote CalFresh, to promote our free grocery programs. There's um, some flyers here, as well as videos linked on the presentation. Feel free to download these there. You have our, these the food connection flyers, this green one here, uh, multilingual, English, Spanish, Vietnamese, Chinese, uh, four, five, so five different flyers for this green flyer. Multilingual is the one that we use when we go out to do outreach. Feel free to download that or our CalFresh flyer. Feel free to download any of those two flyers and distribute, print, and send to your community members. We also have videos here in English, Spanish, Vietnamese, Chinese. Feel free to share that with your um, community members as well. And we also want to invite you, if you're not already, to join our, what we call our Outreach Partner Engagement Network, open for short, and this network kind of helps expand our outreach to the, communica the communities that you serve. And these benefits as part of the network include, you get training similar to the one that we went over today, you get training to help connect your clients to CalFresh or our free grocery program through our referral system. And so once you connect with us, we'll be able to help set that up with you to have the outreach tools you need to connect your clients with us. And so we can help them, support them for CalFresh and free groceries. You'll be able to access our robust and diverse partner network. We partner with over 80 other organizations, nonprofits, um, and over 60 medical partners. So very diverse network. Um, and we do meet you know, every year or so to kind of just network and talk about different updates to CalFresh. Um, and we also provide outreach materials like the flyers in the previous slide, any other outreach support that we can do. So we go out to outreach events, tabling events, resource fairs, health fairs, any you know presentations you want us to provide to your clients, we're glad to come in and give information about our free grocery resources or CalFresh. We also offer on-site CalFresh application assistance. So if you have events coming up or um, you know that you know your clients are gonna be in a specific location for like three or four hours, you always invite us, help them apply for CalFresh on-site. Um, we also provide any assistance with CalFresh outreach strategies or outreach strategies in general and campaigns. And how do clients benefit from being part of open? Um, well, not really the clients, but being part of open, clients are able to get free grocery program referrals. Um, so when you send us your clients through our referral system, we call them back within about two business days, help them find a free grocery site to go to. We help them apply for CalFresh. Uh, we also provide post application support. So helping them submit verification documents or even uh, call the county if they're having trouble communicating with the county, we call them um, with the client to kind of see you know, what's going on with their application and what other steps they need to do to get approved. So providing that post application support is very, very important because sometimes clients might not know how to navigate those um, especially CalFresh, that uh, kind of benefit system. And we also provide information referral and referrals to other support services that they may need. Uh, so for example, we get a lot of clients that ask about housing rent support, rent rental assistance. So we kind of refer them to other organizations, other government agencies that help with that. So they, they kind of just get the resources that they need to on top of food assistance. 
and how to become an open partner, there is a um, outreach partner inquiry form listed on this PowerPoint and I'll also drop it in the chat if you're interested in filling out that form and we'll get back to you within a couple of days to kind of set up that partnership. And um, if you know other teams, other organizations that may be interested also in some this type of partnership, feel free to share this form with them as well. Um, I'll drop it in the chat as well. So any other questions? That's pretty much our presentation today. Thank you so much for listening. And I put the form in the chat there, the smart sheet form. All right, we're getting an outpouring of appreciation in the chat for the presentation. Uh, one more question came in. Uh, just one question regarding the delivery of food. Who would the member call for that? Yes, that's a great question, Eric. So they could call our Food Connection hotline, and I'll put it in the chat as well, just so everyone has it, 984-3663. Um, and Eric, if you know your, you or your organization would like to partner with us, you could also send us referrals directly through our referral system, but that's something we'll have to meet to discuss and set up with you. But if anything, feel free to call our um, Food Connection hotline. Appreciation there too from Eric for the answer and the presentation at large. Other questions from folks? We've got a little bit of time left here if anybody has any additional questions. Okay. As always, if you do have additional questions, feel free to reach out to home base. We can forward those questions on to our friends at uh, Second Harvest. Uh, it, you can also reach out directly to Second Harvest with questions. Uh, oh, another question popped up. Uh, Ellen asks, after a client gets denied for CalFresh, is there a waiting time to reapply? Uh, and Patricia's quick on the draw. Uh, it looks like 30 days. Uh, Eric would like to know the winning lottery number. I would like to know that as well. That would be great. <laughs> and if anyone knows, please share with, the, with everyone here. I wish I could say the winning lottery number was 800 984 My Last life is not that simple. Um, there will be a copy of the PowerPoint slides available. It'll be posted to the COC website. And